Uh, so we look at the standard normal distribution. So we should have pens and laptops, laptops down at least. We're going to take some notes here, and we'll talk about some of the questions that we're going to come across. So the standard normal distribution is just an extension of what we were doing yesterday. Obviously, the name gives us a few hints. The normal distribution was something that deals with continuous data that falls around a mean, has symmetry on both sides. It's how data tends to form when dealing with large populations, correct? So it centers around a mean. We've got a nice symmetrical value on that ball curve. The problem with the normal distribution is it's very hard to deal with without technology. So to sort of cope with that, we transform our data using the standard normal distribution. So it's still a normal distribution. All we're doing is shifting our mean, manipulating our mean and our standard deviation to make the numbers much kinder and make it make more sense. So to use the standard normal distribution, which is what SND stands for, we have to use a z-score. And what a z-score does is it essentially converts our values into a standard deviation score. So where before we might have had Harry's 163 from yesterday's example, that would become negative one or negative 1.32, if that makes sense. So that represents the standard deviations away from the mean. The mean centers on zero. So where I have 10 here, if I was dealing with a standard normal distribution, that would be zero. My six and my 14, or my six would be a negative number, my 14 would be a number much smaller than 14. Cool? Probably about one. The Z score can be found by taking our score, X or whatever our score is, and I'll run through an example on the board in a second, minus our original mean divided by our standard deviation. Please note we are not minusing by zero and dividing by one. That does nothing. I wrote that down, but I thought we probably didn't need to have that if we've got a bit of common sense. We know that minusing zero and dividing by one just gives us our original value anyway. So this is the mean and the standard deviation of our original data set. The z-score tells us how many standard deviations we are away from our mean. Cool? So it will pop up all the time in tech, active, tech free. So you want, in, in a tech active exam, you don't need to worry about it so much. In a tech free exam, it's really important. So rather than sort of bore you to death with a lot of the information, I thought we'd go through a couple of examples of questions because I think it'll make more sense once we do that. So if you look at 9.3 question one, we see that we have, just here's a really simple, convert this to a Z score. What does this tell us about my distribution? My mean is 15 and my standard deviation is 3. So I've got a standard deviation of 3 and a mean of 15. So if you look at this, how many standard deviations away from the mean is 18? 1. One larger, correct? It's one standard deviation greater than our mean. So what would we expect, given this, what would we expect our z-score to be? One, because it's one standard deviation away from our mean. Cool? So, z equals, what's my x value? 18 minus my mean divided by my standard deviation. 18 minus 15 is? 1. Cool. So I could draw, if I was to draw this data set, it would look like this originally. It would have a mean of 15, 18, 12, etc, etc. If I was to transform that to a z-score, a standard normal distribution, this would be 0, this would be 1. What would 12 become? Negative 1. Negative 1. Cool. It's exactly the same thing, we're just using much nicer numbers. And it makes it a lot more clear, because you can tell me between negative one and one, regardless of what data I'm dealing with, what's the percentage of people in that? Between one and negative one? 68. 68%? Yeah, well, I always forget it too. Between two and negative two, it's always going to be? 95, and between 3 and negative 3, it's going to be 99 or 99.7, whatever it happens to be. Sweet. That's a really nice, easy question. We're going to practice a few of those, but that's a good chance for us to practice calculating our z-score. 
Question two is a little bit tricky because it's asking us now to determine a few, or use our understanding more of normal distributions and standard normal distributions. And it gives us this information. It says P of X is greater than 14 equals 0 0.35. Find the probability that X is greater than six. It's really, we've got a bit, few important bits of information in this. What's the important, what's required for this to be done. Could you do this without the graph or not? You could, no. Without the graph you can't do this because we need to know no, no it's, it's, it's a reasonable assessment what you're saying because you think oh, I've got enough information there. You do providing you know your mean is 10. Why is 14 and 6? Why do we need to know the mean is 10 for that? How far is 14 away from me? Well, what this tells us, yeah, you, you're correct. What this tells us here, the probability we've been given is this probability here, correct? And we know that equals? 0 0.35. So how is that going to help us find the probability that x is greater than 6? So just plus it. Just plus 0 0.35. What do we think it's going to be? What do we think that looks like? It's going to be yeah, well, 1 minus 0 0.35, which is going to be 0 0.65. So you figured that out. And you're 100% correct. The reason we can do that is because of symmetry. Why does symmetry matter for that? Why does symmetry matter? I know this area here, correct, is 0 0.35. For me to be able to prove or to work this, that area must be the same as that area. And that only works when they're the same distance from the mean. Are they the same distance from the mean? Yeah. So I can use that. 1 minus 0 0.35, or pen choice, which equals 0 0.65. Happy with that? And yep. Wouldn't that um, P, X, um, wouldn't that also include um, yeah, yeah, it will. Yep. So this is the same. What I'm saying here, this is exactly the same as saying what's the probability that x is? Because when we take like less than the 14. Probability of, uh, when we take the probability of p less than 6 and take away from yeah. 1. Yeah, which is what you're doing. The probability that p is less than 6 is equal to the probability that p is greater than 14. Right. Makes sense? It's exactly right. What you're saying is exactly right. If it's more than one standard deviation away, why is it less than 0 0.68? It's not more than one standard deviation. This is less than one standard deviation. Is it? Yep. Just the standard deviation, not 4? No, standard four. deviation is not 4. Oh, okay. We've just been given those two values. Never got it standard, so it should be So for question, yeah, it didn't give us any it information. It looks like it is. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty close to one. It'll be close to one standard deviation, but it's not exactly that. For question three, I want to give you a minute before I start doing this problem. What do we think if we're sitting in an exam trying to solve this problem, what do you think would help? Drawing a graph. Drawing a graph. So we know what a normal distribution looks like. Start with that. Okay. You might want to draw a couple of them. What I want you to do 
do now is draw, start with B. What do we know about B? What do we know about this area here? It equals zero point four four, correct? Is that X? Hmm? Should it be a way around because x is less than b? You are correct. So I'm on the wrong side, am I? Yes. I am. Well, I am on the wrong side. Thank you, Harry. You are 100% correct. I misread that. That should be there. In which case, this area in blue is 0 0.44, correct? The area in black is equal to? So how do I find this area? which is essentially that area there, correct? This area here. And we know that B is equal to 0 0.44. So if we go, so this is the probability that X is, if we want to be pro proper with it, probability that X is less than A is that. Cool. Probability that x is less than b equals 0 0.44. The probability that x is greater than a but less than b is going to be 0 0.44 minus 0 0.29. There's another way to do it. How else could we have done it? We could have done 1 minus 0 0.44, leaving us with 0 0.56. 0 0.71, subtract that value, 0 0.56. Cool? Doesn't matter which way you do it. Do we understand what's going on there? Overwhelmingly no, it sound. Mm. It might help if you draw two diagrams. That diagram is getting very cluttered. Yep. I'll get my red pen so I can differentiate. Just to be clear, if this area is 0 0.71, then this. That's not a good red pen.
think. Yeah. Cool. And then we want to subtract that 0.29 away from our 0.44. Sweet. We're using our complementary probabilities to identify the probabilities that we actually want here. Happy with that? Yep. Sweet. Finish off question one, two, and three, and four on exercise 9.3, and then finish your education first. What's that? I've already done a couple.